Aging Texas began a peaceful life. In the mid-twenties, it experienced a deep modernization, which took two years. When these countries sat down at the Washington Naval Limitation Treaties, they decided that they would no longer build or, or they would limit the number of ships they built. They were going to build. Part of the results of that were that the Battleship Texas replacement was scrapped and Battleship Texas was uh, needed to be upgraded. So between 25 and 27, she was converted from a fuel oil or from a coal fired ship to a fuel oil fired ship. Uh, she had her torpedo tubes removed as originally built she could fire torpedoes those were removed in that 25 27 refit um, she also added some more defense to herself um, she had blister tanks torpedo blister tanks added all of these things upgraded her made her a, a new ship for all intents and purposes and gave her a second life with the beginning of world war ii texas was back in the ranks the uss texas would be awarded with five combat stars for special merits. The first star was awarded in 1942 for her part in Operation Torch. The Allied landings in French Morocco and Algeria. Texas debut in the role of ship artillery support. Its objectives were to take out the battery at Old Fort of Kasbah and to deter tanks, which tried to attack marines and surrounding roads, on which the pro-fascist Vichy regime French troops feed reinforcements. In addition, the battleship was conducting anti-fascist propaganda. The ship's radio station continuously broadcasted messages from Allied leaders and resistance. She was the only U.S. warship to serve in all theaters of operation. She was involved at the invasion of North Africa, invasion of southern France. She was at D-Day, June 6, 1944, and ongoing. Um, and then she eventually moved over to the Pacific, where she served both Iwo Jima and Okinawa. The main event in the USS Texas's career was her participation in opening a second front, the landing of Allied troops in northern France in the summer of 1944. Despite the enormous superiority of the Anglo-American forces at sea and in the air, well-sheltered enemy positions on the ground were keeping Allied troopers landing on the Normandy coast under heavy fire, causing heavy casualties and not allowing them to move forward. Texas was able to come close to the shore and maintain direct fire from all her guns. By that time, Texas's armament was already far behind, comparing to the latest battleship's range of fire. But the commander found an original solution to this problem. He flooded part of the torpedo protection walls, tilting the ship and increasing the elevation angle of the guns. This adjustment allowed the USS Texas to strike all of her planned targets. The battleship Texas would fire more than 500 rounds allowing the Allies were able to gain a foothold on the shore and expand it. After landing on the Normandy coast, Texas took part in capturing Cherbourg. This major port was well protected, in particular with a large gun battery Hamburg. Texas began an artillery duel with it, during which it was damaged for the first and last time during its service. A German 240mm shell went straight into the conning tower and destroyed all the unarmored constructions, including the bridge. Steerer died, and five more people were seriously injured. The captain was lucky to survive. But the ship's battle capability was not significantly affected, and the battleship continued its duel with the German battery. Soon, another shell hit the living quarters of ship from the left side of the bow. But it did not explode and was stuck in the cabin of one of the junior officers. The shell was covered with mattresses and, after the battle, Lieutenant Sterdevant carefully removed the shell and pulled the faulty fuse. Minesweeper was awarded with a bronze star and the shell was brought back to Texas as a mascot. 
After Battleship Texas's activity in Europe was completed, it was given a small rest before being sent to the Pacific Ocean. She participated in the assault on Iwo Jima and Okinawa, and during preparation for its last short bout in Japan, met the end of the war. It was obvious that the nearly 40-year veteran battleship could not continue its service. Before sending the old battleship to disposition, the United States Navy offered to sell them to the states whose names they bear. The idea was received with great enthusiasm in Texas. And on the 21st of April 1948, the state's namesake battleship of the same name was officially handed over to the authorities of the state of Texas as a ship museum. And as a floating museum now, we are open seven days a week. We, we love the public to come out and explore the ship and interact with this artifact, this museum, uh, in, a, in a very personal way. You're able to, to explore the ship and, and hopefully get the experience of what it was like to be aboard the ship. is a truly unique ship. It came into commission before the First World War and is the only United States battleship which took part in the Second World on three major theaters of war in Africa, Europe, and the Pacific. Today, this armored giant is standing on eternal parking at the pier in San Jacinto Port, personifying the force and naval power of the first half of the 20th century.